<laughs> All right. Welcome to another episode of the Gonzo Bible Absolutely. Study. Wow. I'll tell you what, I hope you enjoyed the last episode because the last episode was something where we we came in with an idea and a plan yep. uh, of what we were going to talk about. Yep. And quite literally, the Holy Spirit brought up the word inside of us and, they comp- and moved us in a completely different direction. While still on topic, it was something where we literally had just the outpouring of the Spirit in that episode. So if you haven't watched last, last week's episode, which is How Are You? Part 1. <laughs> this is How Are You? Part 2. Now Woo! this will stand right. up, This will stand on its own two feet. So if you don't watch Amen. last week's episode, we get it. But we do That's... recommend it for you and your loved ones and anybody else around. Last week's episode was so much of Amen. God Amen. and so little of us that it, it was Praise something God. where... <laughs> it just it wiped it wiped our our slate clean Amen. as far as what we were dealing with. We're, we it's were, like those Sundays. It's like those Sundays, you know, when you plan for worship and, and, and good and good pastors and worship leaders and 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 youth workers and all the above. All, it, it's a good thing to plan and prepare. You know, we're we're instructed yeah. to do that. Yeah. And you know, and you get your bulletin all set and things like that. You know, or you get your audio visuals all in order and then god comes in there and the holy spirit just blows the whole thing all to heaven <laughs> yeah. i love it and that's it's what so that's great. what happened yeah it's that's so great <laughs> and so so we're going Woo! back into this yeah and we're and like we're going I like and, and for a minute we're gonna let you see behind the curtain so we literally just recorded last oh, week's just, episode yeah. <laughs> we're right. so part of our giddiness was we just had that experience yes and so this we're recording multiple episodes today and so you're 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 seeing what kind of behind the curtain. Our giddiness is because we just moments ago just had an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We're 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 still Man. on that high. Man. We're still living in that truth Praise and in Lord. that word. So when we say how are you today? That's right. And last time we talked, and pa- Pastor Clark started off last time by saying, you know, do you feel like you're under attack? And then I yeah. went into my testimony, yeah. and then what we experienced was the fact that. All of the things that are facing us in the natural became irrelevant. Exactly. And so what we're going to talk exactly. about today is we're going to dive back into the Word and we're going to say, how are you today? How are you? How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Don't give me a fine. That's right. Oh. <laughs> so, right. Pastor Clark, how are you today? Well, doing pretty good. But, you know, like, like Robert said, you know, it's... Uh, my 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 honest response was, you know, we go into the new year always anticipating... That New Year's service, which we always make a Lord's Supper service, with that significance of renewing ourselves in the table of the Lord. Right. And as often as you do these things, you do it in remembrance of me. Yeah. And what a better way, whether could there be a better way of starting the new year? And we usually do that, and depending on how the calendar falls, you know, on New Year's Eve or on the new first New Year's Sunday for sure. And I always have and I always have a, a scripture card that we like to give everybody. And uh, yeah, I've got I've got ours right here. Let's see if I can munch my stuff. There we go. There we go. Give it a pull. There, thanks. Um, and like I said, living in the new, and and we just we've we've got some scriptures that we've prayed about and prayed over that we put out and and uh, that folks can carry. And it thrills me all through the year. Uh, just a few weeks ago, before the holidays came in, I noticed one of the leadership in our church had his scripture card all the way back from January 2022 uh, yeah. paper clip to his Bible when he had and you know and I was thrilled that he's keeping himself reminded of some of the verses we stepped into a new year with uh, and if you'd like one of those I'd be glad to send you one really would um, you know and if you need a pen I'll send you a pen too okay I don't know about that I don't like that you, you need a cup you have to order that okay anyway <laughs> How about, hey, hey, all right. There you go. Nonetheless, but some Shameless of us, some, I know. <laughs> Shameless some, product placement. That was horrible. Some of us have come into the new, I was in a bit of a daze. Let me put it that way. Sometimes yeah, we started the holidays there at Thanksgiving weekend with, we were literally decorated all for Christmas by Thanksgiving weekend because we had a family get together, yeah. uh, kind of a first of a reunion in honor of, of grandparents who have passed on, mm-hmm. uh, godly people, man, I just celebrating them, celebrating their lives, and hopefully to encourage the uh, you, the younger generation to pick up the pace, right? Yeah. Anyway, and we've had different events in our home and in different places. Uh, 
all through. I mean, we just now have taken down <laughs> Christmas. And so yeah, kind of coming into the year, and bless her heart, my wife had a respiratory infection, and, and, and dad, who just turned 90 years of age, praise God, I had the privilege to buy him a steak dinner, and he ate every bit of it. And um, and we did. The and wait, the croissant. The, and, yeah, and the waitress, <laughs> the waitress says, "Can I bring you a box?" He said, "I'm going to put it in this box." Anyway, yeah, I, he's still much of a man. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Love you, Pop. But the thing is, uh, I had the privilege to do that. Okay, but we have done a lot of celebrating, and I we were just kind of give out. I'm just kind of so <laughs> party out. I, yeah, I'm just I was just kind of been in that in a daze type of thing and fighting some serious, you know. And right after that, we found out Pop had COVID. And also, you know, we, we've been struggling with some of that. But praise God, praying through it, and God blessing with mild effect and, and quick recovery and sure recovery. Praise his name, for he is the master physician. Amen? That's right. And we are healed by his stripes. Praise God. But here's the thing. Some of you may be feeling besieged. Yeah. And I thought about, you know, because sometimes after coming into the first of the year, everybody's spent out, wore out. Played out, and then you're, you know, and suddenly you've got this surge, or all this pressing in about what's your New Year's resolution, you know, that type of thing. If you're feeling besieged, you think about in the days of Zedekiah and Nebuchadnezzar, who was going toward his 20th year of reign, and he was on a roll. He was a juggernaut of power taking over the Middle East, okay? They're literally building siege ramps, which they've been at for months and months and months, against the kingdom of Judah. That's the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had long fell back in 722, 23. Here we are at the turn at the, at the right there in about 586, 587 BC. And the word of the Lord comes through Jeremiah the prophet. And he says, in the midst of all this, Jeremiah is given the word to make a land purchase. Can you imagine? <laughs> you're, the capital city's about to fall. You've already got a lot of your people being taken captive. It's a, it's a sure thing what's about to happen. And the Lord says, uh, by the way, you need to buy, you need to buy some property uh, and, and make sure that all the, the settlement is there, that, that it can be redeemed and so forth and so Hey, regardless of what happens, you need to have all that. In other words, take care of your business. That's an important thing. Take care of your business. And, and so he comes in here, and in picking up in verse 17, he says, Oh, Lord God, behold, you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Yeah, buddy. And you know, the word we want to bring to you today is this. You're feeling besieged. You're feeling stressed. And you may say, well, I'm fine. I'm okay. But listen. Nothing is too difficult for your God. And if the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and the person of Jesus Christ the Son, he goes on to say, who shows loving kindness to thousands, but repays in the iniquity of fathers into the bosom of their children and after them. O oh, great and mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Mm -hmm. Great in counsel, mighty in deed. Yeah. whose eyes are upon all the ways of the sons of men, right. giving to everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. That's right. So now we've got something to talk about here for a few, because the word of God says, even in the most difficult of times, yeah. listen, a lot of people in our country today, and I know we have an international audience here too, and we're glad to have everybody, and I don't know what's going on necessarily in your country, but a lot of us in our country say, what's going on? And what about this, that, no, whatever. Hey, the thing about it is, you know, have you, been in a, have you been in a situation where your country is under siege? And some may be saying, yeah, <laughs> you know. Okay, well, then you understand how difficult, how ominous, how overshadowing that can be, how dark that can be. Hope is not a word that gets uh, passed around a lot. But we have a word of hope because with our God, all things are possible. He's telling the prophet to go buy land, yeah. to go buy land that's about to be seized. But hey, when you do things the right way, when God knows your heart and the intent of your heart, and in, 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 that, in that thought, yeah. in the, uh, you're getting ready, aren't yeah. you? Okay, in that thought, 
I'm going to take you over to Matthew, but before I do, you, no, you go, go, for okay. go for okay. it. Okay, I want to take you over here to Matthew. Uh, no, better than that, I want to take you to Luke. Let me go to Luke. Uh, because, well, likewise, okay, likewise, I'll yeah. just go ahead and say my piece. I'm going to turn this hound dog loose on you, okay? So when, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jesus was talking about how difficult it was and people were saying, his disciples said, yeah. who can be saved? Who can be saved? Yeah. Some of you may be saying, well, you're talking about people who believe. I'm not sure where I'm at there. Right. Dear friend, some people are saying, you know, it's too difficult or you've got to be too religious. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with religion. It is nothing to do with denominationalism. It is nothing to do with ecumenicalism. Any of that isms, right. okay? Right. And what it's about is the Word of God, the Word of God. And he said here to come follow me, and, and to this young man that he was talking to here, and I love the way Jesus interacts with all ages of people. Mm -hmm. And he interacted with a lot of younger people. A lot of younger people came to Jesus asking him questions. And listen, he wants to hear what's on your heart. He wants to hear what's on your mind. Yep. He cares. He does. In fact, he told what? his disciples to back off and let the children come to him yeah. so he could bless them. So you see, he's got a heart for young people. Absolutely. And, and he said, listen, it, it is easier... Jesus said to his disciples, truly I say to you, it is hard for rich men or rich people to enter the kingdom of heaven. And why does he say that? Because their mind is on all their possessions. Their mind is on, I, can, I make that, can I make another hundred million bucks? Okay? They already have a first one. They've, oh, oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, look out, it's coming, it's coming, okay. <laughs> and so they say, who can be saved? And I'm reading out of Matthew 19. Okay. And in verse 26, he says, and looking at them, and looking at them, Jesus yeah. said this to them. With people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And I want to read that yeah. out of the, 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 the New Living Translation. Yeah, okay. The disciples were astonished and said, who in the world can be saved? I love right. that. I like that. Jesus looked at them intently. I mean, he got in their faces on this, right? This is a serious matter. This is a serious matter. People, people scoff because... The, the term born again got politicized back in the 1970s. Shame that it was. A yeah, lot of us no a lot of us bit into that, but that biscuit didn't chew very well. Okay, I'm telling you something here. It's not about, it's what the word says. Now in John 3 and 7, the scripture says you must be born again. So that's, that's right. a sure word, okay? That's right. Uh, you just take the rest of that stuff and burn it out in the heap. Yep. Here's the thing. The disciple says, well, who in the world can be saved? Yep. Serious matter. Jesus looked intently in their eyes, and he said this. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. Period. But with God, everything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. All right, senor. You know, we talk about being besieged. Get ready. We talk about being under attack. And it put me into yeah. a mind when I was a teenager, especially, but even to this day, I enjoy it. Uh, some old punk rock songs, some old, so old, you know. <laughs> so, well, one of those, one of those bands had a song back in the day, and it was "We're Under Attack, We're Under Attack," and the whole song is about how we're just we're being besieged, we're being attacked by every direction, ah, everything's coming, everything's. Okay. And and that's what that's it's about. funny is because that that band, the, this this spirit of anarchy, you know, it's punk rock, so it's real, it's real rah, anti man, it's you know whatever it's. You know, anti-government, all this kind of stuff. And all they want to do is profess and profess and profess. We're under attack, man. We're just, we're constantly being put down. Yeah. I mean, I'm just being kept down. I'm being kept down. And, you know, there's, uh, of course, that's in a lot of music and modern day especially. Well, it does. And all that. But that's yeah. that. What it is is it's that's the spirit true. of Antichrist. Yeah. That's what it is. Because yeah. guess yeah. what? It's really cool. You know why that I say that's the spirit of Antichrist? Is because all the devil can think about is the fact that he is under attack. He is fixated on the fact that there that, that there is a war going on. He's he, and he wants it because it's chaos, and he relishes in it, and he just wants everybody to have this spirit in mind of oh, you should be anxious, you should be filled with fear, you should you should feel guilty, you should yeah ha, ha, just constantly keeping everybody because. The thing about it is, if people feel like they're isolated, if people feel like they're under attack all the time, if they feel like things are coming against them all the time, wow. guess what they stop doing? Good thoughts. Yeah, that's so horrible. It's horrible. It's yeah. horrible. You yeah. stop. You in, in the natural, what you just get beat down and beat down and beat down. I man, I just feel like man. Every time I turn, everything's just. I'm getting a left hook and a right hook and just it's being beat up. 
I'm constantly under attack. Yep. Man, and no matter what I do or what I try to do, it just it's not working out. You feel that way today? Have you felt that way in the past six months? Have you felt that way in the past three days? Because I have. And guess what? It's a lie. Hey, it's a complete yeah. fictitious lie. You know how I know Amen. that? It's because right here, the prophet Jeremiah received a word from God in, verse, in chapter 30, in verse 17. And God said, for I will restore you to health. And I will heal your wounds, says the Lord, because they like have that. called you outcast, saying, This is I am, whom no one seeks after, for whom no one cares. And Amen. the Lord said, I do. Amen. I like that. He says, yes, I do. That's and he right. says, not only that, I'm going to heal you of your wounds. So wow. when, when the prophet Jeremiah said, when the prophet it receives then right on it heals, yep. literally in the next chapters, I think it's two chapters later where Pastor Clark was just yep, now. Yep, and it says, yeah. hey, you know what? Your nation is under attack. Things look like everybody's going to be enslaved. It's going to be horrible. I want you to go buy a big slot of land. And not only that, <laughs> but once you buy that land, I want yeah. you to consecrate it yeah. to me and wow. I will bless it. Not only cool. will I bless it, but I will use it to heal your land. Yeah. Because that is my property. Yeah. See, that's just it. The devil wants you to think, oh, this is hard times. We better button up the hatches. We better start hoarding our goods. We better start, you know, just hiding things away and make sure we have, you know, a $20 bill tucked away for a rainy day. We yeah. need to make sure we're doing all this. Yeah. Guess what? Wow. You know what God says? Bring your harvest to the storehouse. That's right. You know what the storehouse is? It's him. Yeah. Bring it to him. And That's one right. of the things that we realize right. as New Testament believers is it's all God's. That's, yeah, there you go. It's all God's. Can I insert that? Psalms go for 24, it. Psalms yeah, 24, buddy. verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all of its contents, Everything the world, therein. and those who dwell in it. Wait a minute. Go for it. Are you, you're saying that all of creation and every human being that's ever existed belongs to the Lord. Yep. Well, then what's his. the problem? We're all his, yeah. Oh, uh, wait, because we have a bunch of arrogant... Man, nah, in the flesh, I want to say some other things. Don't say that. that... <laughs> Sons of the devil. Ah. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll go there. Okay, um, okay. That, that, want to ha that want to live in this thing and live apart from the word and live apart from the promise. Because you know what else he told Jeremiah? Hey, we're gonna. I'm just sticking right here in Jeremiah. When I roll over to chapter 33, and in verse 6, he says, Behold, ah, okay, in okay. the future, restore Jerusalem. I will yep. lay upon it health and go. healing, and I will cure them, and will reveal to them the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, and stability, and the truth. Ooh, yeah. Because, see, this prophecy, mm -hmm. in my humble opinion... Is not about a Jerusalem that we know even into our day. It's talking about a new Jerusalem that gets established in the sun. And yeah. see, that yeah. Jerusalem where only the truth can reside. See, I don't I don't buy into this thing that we're already living in the age of Christ. New no, sir. No, we're in the church age. We're in the church age. In the church age. And in now. the church age, we look forward to the new, new Jerusalem. Because in the new That's Jerusalem. Right. That's right. Clothed in God's glory yep. and all of its splendor and radiance, yep. the luster of it resembled a rare and most precious jewel like jasper, shining clear as crystal, as Revelation 21 11 tells us. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Is a beacon of truth and peace. Wow. See, I'm under attack. Doesn't rock, it doesn't work with peace. Yeah. Because of people yeah. that are under attack. And that are anxious all the time. Do you suffer from anxiety today? Do you constantly feel like the boogeyman's around the corner? And yes, that's a silly metaphor for the Baba Yaga or whatever you want to call him. Yeah. But yeah. do you ever, you constantly feel like this foreboding sense? Because I've been there. Yeah. I've struggled with anxiety in my life. I've struggled with depression. Depression that was almost disabil debilitating. Where I didn't want to function. I just wanted no, to stay in bed all day. It's not fun. But guess what? But guess what? That's a lie straight from hell. There you go. That's a spirit of Antichrist. And in this world, trying to get in your flesh and say, you feel that tingly on the back of your neck? There you go. Yeah, I sure do. It's a nap. Yeah. Take, that's Satan's right. a nap. What's he going to do to me? I'm, I am joint heirs with the savor of the universe. 
Praise God. What's he going to do? Yeah. He's already been defeated. That's why he's under attack. That's, under, that's, already, that's, that's the one what? Jesus said, rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, done. Walk on. It's done. And when, and when Jesus right. told his disciples, yeah. in the flesh, it's impossible. That's right. In the flesh, humanly your, speaking, humanly right. speaking, yeah. in your natural brain, yeah. none of this will make sense. Yeah, so he knows how we think. Yeah. He knows what we're going to say. He yeah. knows what others are going to say. Well, yeah. That's just not possible. That's not, no. That's just not possible. Well, in possible. the flesh, it's not. Yeah. yeah. In the flesh, it makes no sense That's for right. me to be sitting here right now talking about thousands of years old script words. Doesn't make no, sense in the no, flesh at no, all. No, it's no. me spinning my wheels no. in the flesh. But I tell you what, in the spirit, I will tell you, I have not felt more alive and rejuvenated this entire year than I do right this moment talking about God's word. Amen. Amen. That's the spirit. Who knows? Only God knows us. That's right. Completely. That's what He says. He knows His eyes. Uh, go forth and are open to the ways of men. But how? How? What do we know? We know little. This is the youngest of my three sons, and at one point in our young life, we were told that we may never have children. Yeah. Ta da! Okay, this wee lad here, yeah, and two others, rascals they are. But you know what? <laughs> Praise God. All have made professions of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know what? I don't know how everybody's living to follow. That's, that's on each one of us. That's right. You might say, oh, well, they're okay because you're a preacher man. Oh, well, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Nope. That doesn't buy my, you know, the fact that the nope. fact that I'm moving into my 48th year of ministry, that doesn't buy a cent when it comes to the word of God. We are each accountable before God. Each of us. And you know what? His salvation's on him. Yep. Between him and the Lord. And that I'm just privileged to know that he is born again. And I'm thankful to see the fruit of that. And and you know, and for someone who was told by a professional of this world, someone reckoned, and I'm not putting that person down at all. That was somebody that we consulted and went on consulting till the day they died. Very fine medical practice. But we were told because of certain conditions, this young man would not be here, nor his two brothers, you see. Yep. But hey, you know what? Is anything too difficult for God? Now that's what was going on over there in Matthew when they were talking about who can be saved. Yeah. Who can be saved? And, and, and at one point they were using an old reference to the fact that it's, it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And there, yep. was, a, there was a small a small place in the wall or the gate of Jerusalem, I forget which side it was, that was so small that, you know, just, just a person might could crouch down and go in. And, you t and if you've ever seen a camel, a camel and all of his unfolded self, even a small camel, they're rather large critters. And he said it'd be easier for that camel to go through that than for a rich man, someone who's got their eyes totally fixed in the world and what the world can give them. It's easier for a camel to go through, enter Jerusalem that way, than for a man to enter into the kingdom of God. So humanly speaking, like the NLT says, the New Living Translation, humanly speaking, humanly speaking, you know, and that's the best we can be, right, uh, who we are, that who then in the world can be saved? But... He says, Jesus, <laughs> looking at them intently, said, it is all things, everything is possible with God. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. The dear friend, you know, today in your life, can we encourage you, whatever the need is, whatever you're struggling with, that you would look to the Lord God? Yep. And you can go to so many places in the word of God and see where your need is is parallel to needs that have always been in the lives of people. Yep. Because God sees you. God sees your way. And, and you know, we referred back there to, to Jeremiah, and I, I've just, it's always been kind of, a, kind of a funny thing. We used it a lot of times with folks and telling the folks, did you know God had a phone number? <laughs> and, and, and a lot of folks would say, a what? Excuse me? A phone number? You know, and that was even, that was even in before the days of cell phones and all that. And, uh, you know, folks are starting thinking, can I look him up in the yellow pages? Or, well, you know, 
But no, uh, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah 3, 3, 3, you know? Yeah. And, and Jeremiah 33, 3 says what? Call on me. <laughs> Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. It's time to get in touch with Jesus. It's time to get in touch with God and his holy word because nothing is impossible with him. You feel besieged? God may be telling you to buy land during a time of seizure. <laughs> you know, but, but listen, it better be God talking to you or else you'll be digging yourself a deeper hole. Yeah. Right? Be obedient. Amen. That's there's, what this is all about. There's the key right there. That's what this is all about. You step out in faith. You That's step right. out in obedience right. to God's word. And let God show you something. Yeah. Have a good day. Great and mighty things. Amen. Have a blessed day. <laughs>